Good evening. Um, it's good to be with you again. And it's Saturday night. Uh, someone watching these videos said, that doesn't really look like the church office. And they were right. It is, um, it is our, what we call our library at home. It's, it's an office. There's a bed in here for guests. Um, so welcome to the Gary and Laurel Library. Um, <clears throat> tonight, I thought we would <clears throat> talk about trusting God. Look through the, as John Calvin says, uh, I love this uh, way of thinking about it from John Calvin. Um, he says, uh, use scripture as a lens through which to see the world. And uh, that's what I try to do. And uh, so come along with me as we look at trusting, especially trusting God through the lenses of scripture. <clears throat> So uh, let's look at, let's start with Psalm 91, Psalm 91. Now I'd prefer you use the Revised Standard Version or the King James Version, maybe the ESV. I was not as happy with the way they worded it in uh, the New Revised Standard Version. And I'm not sure exactly what the NIV sounds like here, but I'm going to be using the Revised Standard Version, the RSV. The first two verses go like, this is one of the most beautiful psalms, uh, passages in the entire Bible on trusting God. The first two verses read like this. <clears throat> he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So that person will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. A person who deeply trusts in God. God is like a fortress for them. Now, I <clears throat> read a commentary one time. I remember reading it. I didn't read it recently. On both Psalm 90 and Psalm 91. And this person that was writing this commentary really uh, liked Psalm 90. It's about how mortal we are, that we can die, that we can die quickly without much notice. That we're like the grass that withers away because they felt like it was realistic in finding our hope in God in the middle of a great harm that can fall, fall to us. The, the, the same writer, commentator, looked at Psalm 91 and they strongly disliked it. They felt like it misled us, that it was not trustworthy. This is one of those kinds of thinkers about the Bible who um, they value what they like uh, and they disregard as unimportant what they don't like or they disagree with. They sort of put themselves up over the Bible and they're the authority that decides what in the Bible is authoritative and what isn't. As I've shared with you from the pulpit, I don't know where these folks get that other realm of authority with which they decide these things. But this, is a, this was a commentator who did that. And he, I think it was a he, did not like Psalm 91. Now, I, I have a skeptical view, as you know, as I've just shared with you, about a, a writer like that. But this commentator was attacking Psalm 91 for a reason that we need, need to look honestly at. We need to not defend the Bible by, by being naive or dishonest. We need to grapple with the issues that someone brings up when they have trouble with a part of the Bible. So um, I'll look at what this, uh, this commentator had trouble with when, when I come back, uh, but First, I need, I need a sip of my, uh, my tea here. English breakfast, black tea. I'll be right back. 